Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited to show you how to paint this today. We're going to be using a 16 by 20 black primed canvas, turquoise, a phthalo blue, and a round chalk brush for blending. We're also going to be using some titanium white and some other colors that I'll be sure to post below in a list of um, all the supplies we're going to be using today down in the description below this video. So I'm going to take both turquoise and that phthalo blue and just start building up the background one brush stroke at a time. You can apply your paint any way you want. It's just going to be a blurry kind of a background so it doesn't really matter. Just enjoy the process. I'm going to add a little bit of white to create some softer tones and I'll continue this until my canvas is almost covered. Now I want to have a little bit of black showing through here and there. And this will help to build that contrast and that shadow that we want for this painting. So once I'm finished covering this up, we're going to begin the second part of this painting. I'm going to be using Luminous Rose and I'm not going to wash my brush off because I want to have the blue, the turquoise and the white in there to mix and blend with that rose, that Luminous Rose that we're going to use. If you don't have Luminous Rose, you can also use Magenta. And just feel free with the paint pull a little bit of white in here and there and just have different tones of that blue turquoise with the white, uh, light, lots of light and darks going on just so that we get a wide range of uh, light and shadow and mood for this painting. Okay, so it's time for our next step. I'm going to take my brush that I didn't wash. I want it to have that little bit of blue in there, like I said earlier, and the turquoise. I'm going to kind of just roll my round brush in with that magenta or luminous rose. Like I said, if you don't have luminous rose, you can use magenta or any pink that you have. So don't let um, not having a certain shade or color or brand of paint that I'm using. If you don't have that, don't let that stop you or prevent you from creating this painting. You just need to use some alternatives, um, like I said, purple, pink, um, but I'm just making really short little brush strokes here, kind of wispy like. Adding color, the reason why I'm adding this color is because I really want to build up a warm, a beautiful warmth down here and it's creating like a, a gorgeous violet shade. Um, but also, this is the beginning stages of the plants and the little flowers that are going to kind of have frost and dew drops on them later on. So this is the, the base layer for that. And that's why I'm not over blending because I'm going to be building it up to the foreground. So there's going to be a bit more detail and it's going to be less blurry. Now coming in with a soft mop brush. You can use any mop brush or any kind of round brush, just creating some soft hazy circles. Um, this is just to add some um, more mood to this painting and a little bit of the background, um, possibly some softer looking um, plants kind of blurry and in the distance. And I'm kind of just getting a feel for all the colors and blending them together. All these colors look really nice together so you can't really go wrong with this color palette we're using today. Um, you're not going to get any muddy tones if you mix these up. They're going to look really pretty even. The turquoise and the luminous rose look really nice together. So I'm just going to continue this process, building up these little blurry circular orb looking things. And then I'm going to come in with a filbert brush right here just to get a few smaller ones. Um, the end of my filbert brush is a little bit more round than that mop brush so I can come in and make some smaller ones and just kind of overlap and overlay them just building this up. I'm going to start doing some little scoops with my brush now. This is to create um, some other little spider webs that we might have going on and also it just looks really pretty I think and so I'm going to continue doing this because I'm enjoying um, this type of brush stroke and the soft blending of colors that I'm getting. 
Um, once I'm finished doing this, and all I'm doing guys, sorry, is just taking a little bit of white and it's mixing in with all the other colors that I have. So you can use any color you want and mix it with white, a little bit of water if you're having trouble with the blending. Like if your um, canvas has dried and your paint's drying really quickly, then you can just use a little bit of water and it'll loosen that paint up off of your canvas. Um, and I'm just layering over here, picking up little bits of each color each time. I'm going to switch over to my liner brush now and start pulling in the web. This is kind of going to be like the top part um, and I just want to blur it up after so I'm going to pull a few little lines in and then where I'm going to have my little flowers that are kind of frost covered and maybe with a little bit of dew, I'm just going to do little flicks with the end, the tip of my brush and like I said I'm just going to blur this up in a little bit and then I'm going to continue doing little tiny flicks, little scoops and this is just starting the soft details of each of our little plants and flowers and whatever we have going on back there. Kind of just making it up as I go along. Getting a feel for the paint and the colors and what I want to develop this painting into. After making a few little um, stems for my flowers, I'm going to take another mop brush. This is dry and I'm going to take just a little bit of my white and just soften crisscross and create little circles, kind of just dusting and blending all around very lightly. Now I've got my Luminous Opera, just neon pink here. It's lighter than my Luminous Rose. They're two different colors. And I'm just going to start layering very lightly creating light little circles here to start adding some more colors. Now whether your painting is dry or wet, it's still going to look really pretty. It doesn't even matter. So it's just preference. Do you want to paint wet on wet creating more shades or do you want to dry your painting off first and just apply that color and not let it blend in with anything else. You can have a hair dryer close by guys just to um, dry certain stages of your painting off and certain parts of your painting off. Um, that gives you a little bit more control. If you want to slow the drying process down of your acrylics you can add a slow drying medium. Um, however you can't speed it up by using a hair dryer it will make your acrylics act like oils so just um, take note of that and um, be aware that, that that will happen. So I'm just taking a little bit of luminous yellow now after applying some more of my pink and I'm just creating a little filter here. I want to have kind of a smoky green color going on in the background, yellowy kind of a green. So layering this luminous yellow over top of the blue and turquoise area will give me that color. And I just think that it's fun to use the luminous yellow rather than just going for a sap green um, because it'll create other little colors and shades when applied over the pastel colors that we have here, if that makes sense. Um, and now I've got luminous yellow, another luminous yellow. This is a cool neon yellow. And I'm going to apply a little bit of this over top as well. And I've also got some black that I'm going to mix with my luminous rose. With my liner brush, I'm going to take some water and I'm going to start creating little dabs, dots, and little flicks for our plants and then some little stems as well. So you can do this with different brushes if you want. You can create so many different textures and types of foliage and plants and flowers using um, a filbert brush, a fan brush. Um, just use your imagination. If you don't have a liner brush like this then you can use even a flat brush and turn it sideways and then that's an easy easy way to create some skinny little flower stems. So I'm going to take some of my luminous rose, a little bit of white and start tapping in little dots and dabs for some leaves and flower petals and whatever we have going on here in this little painting. And I'm just going to continue to build up, adding more and more.
I'm going to begin the spider web now and I'm going to start by doing a few little circles, one within um, another, getting a little bit larger as they go out. And then I'm going to start doing some lines from the center of the web. And they're going to curve. You can do yours any way you want. You can make yours absolutely straight and have no curve to them. Um, but I want mine to feel like it's kind of sagging a little bit, maybe from the moisture and the dew that's in the air. Um, and then I'm going to be using a really, really cool brush that I've been thinking about using for a spider web. Um, this is the My Wisp Even Tail Fan Brush, and there's some sections missing out of it. You buy it like that, and then it's kind of it looks like a rake. Um, so you can do multiple lines, um, and they're evenly. Um, cut right so you can make them even and just create all these lines so quickly and effortlessly you know without doing one line at a time using a liner brush so this is just something that I really wanted to try out and I really like it um, if you don't want to have all your lines from your spider web to be this close together then by all means um, do them separately spacing them out a little bit more if you want using a liner brush this is just another alternative I personally like the way it looks I really like using this brush and I'm happy I got it I found this at Michael's in Canada Michael's art store and I've had a lot of you guys asking me about these brushes because I've got a filbert one too and that one's also really cool. It's a little bit smaller than the fan, so you get a bit more control if you're working on um, like tree trunks or fence posts. Um, and so I thought I would let you guys know I looked online and they have a whole bunch of them to choose from on Amazon. Um, that is um, Amazon in Canada, so I'm not really sure about the States. Um, but you can find these um, brushes at any fine art store and online. So I'm just gonna continue to keep connecting these lines to each of the larger lines until I'm all done and then I'm going to go around and define some of the lines a little bit better with more white paint and my liner brush.
So I've gone in with quite a bit more white with my liner brush and I'm adding little dots and dabs here for what's possibly going to be a little bit of dew drops. Uh, very just easy going, easy easy impressionistic type of painting here. Nothing too detailed or intimidating for you guys. Okay, just have fun working on this and if nothing else just enjoy the colors that we're using today because it's just so much fun to do. Don't worry too much about um, making your painting look like mine. It shouldn't. It should be your own version and interpretation of what you're seeing me paint. Um, I'm going to pick up a little bit of turquoise here and I'm going to start building up all of this life that we have going around. So little dabs using thicker amounts of paint, less water, and if I want to soften anything I can go back and do that. The paint is really thick so it's going to take a while to dry and I can blend out whatever I want later on with a brush or my finger. You'll see me alternate sometimes. I just use my finger to kind of blend things out and make them look blurry. So I'm using a little bit of white, a little turquoise. Um, I'm not going to use too much blue anymore for the rest of this painting, but I will be um, creating some really pretty um, impressionistic type of bright red and pink maple leaves in the foreground. And I just love, this is kind of all my, my fall feels, my autumn feels. Uh, my love of this season and kind of just through all my favorite things. I even, I don't like spiders. They creep me out. <laughs> but I do think that the webs are beautiful and especially when you get up in the morning and it's got like the morning dew or even a little bit of frost on them. I just think they're so pretty. Anyways, so I'm just going to keep adding a little bit of those circles and little dots and dabs for the top of the spider web and where it may be connecting to other little plants and stems and flowers. I'm going to add a little bit of paint right next to the circle. So like a half an inch outside of the circle and I'm just going to take off a few of the web lines because I realized that there is one little chunk where there aren't any um, there's not any webbing right in there so I want to kind of just um, take that off make it a little bit blurry bring back that background and then I'll go over later with some more of the titanium white and um, brighten that up and make it a little bit more detailed now I've got my luminous rose and my luminous red and this is from the Holbein luminous neon acrylic heavy bodied uh, series you can find online and at fine art stores if you don't have these bright colors, just use the next best thing that you have. And I'm going to start my um, vivid maple leaves here in the foreground. And I'm just going to take a filbert brush and just start wiggling in. Just really impressionistic. Not too, too realistic here. I'm more out for the color and the light and the shadow. And so I'm going to do the, use those two colors. I'm not blending them on the palette. I'm just taking kind of a scoop of each color and pulling and blending it around right onto the canvas. I'm not going to over blend. I want different variations of colors and I want to look a little bit more chunky. Now what I'm going to do is just continue to build up these leaves, some smaller, some larger, going in different directions along the bottom all the way over to the bottom of the right side. And then I'm going to take a little bit of white and let that blend into the center of each leaf. Again, not over blending and not pushing too hard either. I don't want to push the paint off. I just want to add it very carefully so that I get a, a nice light highlight in the center that's not, com not completely white. It's going to be tinted right with um, that wet paint we have on there, which is a combination of the luminous rose and the luminous red.
And back to my long liner brush, I'm going to take my turquoise with black and some water on my brush and pull in some little stems and little flowers, dried up flowers here in the foreground in front of the spider web. This all always seems a little bit scary. We don't really want to cover up um, something that we worked really hard on, but it makes sense to have some things here in the foreground um, more kind of in silhouette. And we're going to build them up. The tops of them are going to be kind of little soft um, ball types of flowers. I'm not really sure what they are, but they're going to look really pretty at the end. So this is um, optional if you guys are scared and don't want to put these or just don't like it. You don't have to do these. You can put yours uh, somewhere else if you want. And I wanted to show you an alternative of how to make the little tops of these little flowers. I'm using a little fan brush, just a little, little bit of black, and I'm tapping and turning my brush in different directions where I want to create kind of more of a round roundness to the ends. Um, so if you don't have all the brushes I'm using, um, you probably will have at least one. So you can use one brush for, for different things. And I kind of like to do this in my videos where I show you guys alternatives and give you options. So I'm going to continue adding a little bit here and there for these little flowers or plants, whatever they are. And then I'm going to create stems on them. And then I'll just build up from there. So the next color I'm going to be adding to these is turquoise and I'm using quite a bit. I'm taking a little ball of paint on the end of my brush. You can use a round brush, a filbert brush, um, whatever little pointy brush you want to use to create um, this color and little leaves or little petals, whatever they are in here. And so I'm just going to continue adding this. I'll add a little bit of white even and throughout the process of this painting and video I'll be adding a few other little colors, little bits of color like a bit of luminous rose, um, definitely more white and I'm going to soften them up and make them look like they have uh, little round um, drips of, of dew on them. I'm going to come over to the side here on the right and start adding a little bit more. I'm going to do a lighter layer and just add a very light highlight, maybe frost, on the stems of these. I'm just using my filbert brush again over here for this. Doing my little dots and dabs. Highlighting and softening. So when using a lot of color in a painting, um, it's a good idea. It's very important to have a nice balance. So that's why I like to incorporate white and tint a lot of the colors that I'm using. So I keep full strength colors, but then I also do lighter, softer, pastel tones and shades of them. So I'm going to start adding some of my neon pink now. Building up the neon colors of these leaves. I just love using neons and incorporating them into my paintings. It's tough to go back using um, regular colors um, once you've started using these neon acrylic paints. They're just so satisfying and enjoyable to use.
Okay, so after finishing these leaves, I'm just going to add some black details, black and turquoise. I'm going to take my liner brush and define some of these little stems and uh, little flower petals. And once I finish doing this, I'll add a few more details with white. And I'm going to tint my white with a little bit of turquoise just to add another pastel tone into the web. I'll do some more little dabs and dots here. And then I'm going to switch over to a dry and clean uh, round mop brush. And then I'm going to create puffy little tops to these stems that I think look really, really pretty in this painting. Okay, so now I'm ready to take my little mop brush here. You can use any size that you want. Um, I don't have an alternative for this brush other than I would say um, a filbert brush. I would use a large filbert brush. You could try to do this with a fan brush too by tapping and turning your brush. That would probably work. Um, and I'm just taking a little bit of white, tiny bit of turquoise even. My brush is dry. I didn't get it wet for this. And I'm just going to tap all of them and then I'm going to come in. It just makes them look really soft and I really like that, that look. I think it goes nicely with everything else in this painting. Using my little filbert brush now, a little bit of white, maybe a little bit of turquoise. And I'm just going to do some little outlines, little circles, um, and little dots. And this is to create all those little dew drops or little raindrops. Um, and I'll put them wherever I want. I'm even going to have some kind of looking like they're possibly dripping and falling off of some of these leaves, parts of the web, the flowers, and just wherever. I think it looks really pretty in here, so I'm going to keep adding them wherever I want, and this is t totally optional. You guys can do one or two if you want, or none at all, or as many as I'm doing.
so I've added quite a few of these using a few different brushes and just creating soft half circles mainly using my filbert brush here but you can use a liner brush if you want to as well it might be a little bit harder to control unless you have a short um, liner brush and then I'm going to just do a little bit more here and then I'm going to go into my neon orange and this is a color I haven't really used a lot yet it's one of uh, my brand new paints and it's a gorgeous gorgeous color and I decided last minute here here's my luminous yellow first that I'm going to take um, with a little bit of white and I decided this last minute that I wanted to incorporate a little bit more of my luminous yellow and orange into this painting and just do a tiny little bit of uh, dabs here just tinting my white with it and then I'm going to add a little bit more and you can see how thick I'm using the paint so I have no water on my brush I'm just scooping up globs of that paint and I'm applying it so thick that once this dries you'll be able to feel a texture and this is just to add more depth to these leaves and little drips and um, highlighting and I, I just really love that pop of color with the, the red and the pink and the luminous rose that we have I think they all look really nice together and then finally I'm going to be creating um, after adding a little bit more color here and there I'm going to be adding two tiny little sweet pumpkins on the bottom left corner that I just thought I couldn't resist it is almost Halloween here I think it's October 23rd today 2020 depending on when you guys are watching this and I thought how sweet that would be to do a couple little pumpkins here again totally optional guys if you don't um, want to add the pumpkins you don't have to but for those of you that have been requesting Halloween themed painting from me now for well over a month uh, this one's for you guys so thank you patrons I appreciate your guys support so so much and if you're wondering about becoming a patron of mine I'll leave a link below this video now I'm gonna apply a lighter shade I'm gonna be using a combination of colors here I've got my neon orange my luminous yellow I've got white and I'm also going to be using a little bit of my neon um, yellow so I'll have all those colors listed below as well and then I'm going to just create highlights and for those highlights I'll be using my white with my luminous yellow so right in here I'm going to go inside and just very lightly blend that around I'll be adding some shadows using a little bit of watered down black with my neon orange and you can use the filbert brush or a liner brush for that if you want and then what I'm going to do is take some black with my neon yellow for the stem and you can even make little vines and leaves if you want um, so this will make an interesting shade of green so if you don't want to squeeze out um, some sap green or whatever green you can just use the colors that you already have on your palette um, for I'm just going to do a little face on one of the pumpkins the larger one on the the first one that we did on the left and I'm going to be using a little bit of white and a little bit of yellow just creating a really really simple pair of eyes nose and a mouth so as I add the final touches to this painting I want to thank you guys so much for joining me today and I wish you happy painting I'll see you next time soon in another video don't forget to like this video leave a comment below and subscribe for more art inspiration and techniques that will help you become a better and happier painter See you next time.